we are back now with CNN's special coverage of the historic criminal trial of Donald Trump. The first criminal prosecution of a former U.S. president, and it all started today right here where we're sitting. More than half of the prospective jurors, there were 96 uh, in the first panel, they were excused. They were asked, could they be fair and partial? Raise your hand if you can't. And more than half of them raised their hand. Joining me now, John Dean, former Nixon White House counsel, and Tim Naftali, CNN presidential historian and former director of the Nixon Presidential Library. All right, so Tim, you know, what do you what do you make of that? You know, Paula Reed has been reporting that the Trump team expected that number to be high of people who recused themselves essentially because they said they couldn't be fair or impartial, but they thought it'd be about 40%. It was over half. Um, does that surprise you? No, it doesn't surprise me. Uh, it's a very good sign, though. It's yet another uh, bit of evidence that this is uh, going to be a fair trial. Um, uh, our fellow citizens said, look, they felt they couldn't be uh, impartial one way or the other, and they uh, sought to recuse themselves. That, that's part of the process. And remember, one of the key elements of the consequence of this, whatever the verdict is, is how the American people view the trial. Was it fair? Was it unfair? The power of right. the verdict, whether an acquittal or a guilty, uh, will reside, I think, in how Americans view the trial. The fact that a, a large percentage of the jury pool said they couldn't be um, objective, that's part of the process, and that shows this, uh, this trial is being handled the way all trials ought to be. I mean, and John, I mean, to that point, you know, Paul has been saying, well, the Trump team is saving this information to use on appeal to say, well, look how biased the jury pool was. But but actually, it seems that the flip of it may be true when it comes to who actually gets into the jury, right? If people are being honest about uh, being biased, doesn't that say something significant in and of itself? You know, it's not, they're not trying to sneak through. They don't view this as some, you know, calling of, of activism to, to hold the country back from the abyss and serve on this jury. No, they're raising their hands and saying, I'm biased. That's correct. That's not the perception of, of the jury is important for uh, we, none of us really know what's in that heart or that mind of that juror. But the process is what's important. And it's very difficult, Aaron, to reverse a jury verdict. Uh, it's almost impossible. So the, this is a very thin reed to build your appeal on. They're going to be building it on anything and everything they can find along the way. So I think that the fact the judge has gotten a good response from his question, he's eliminated half the pool, he's down to the people he can really talk to now, and that was the plan all along, and it's going right according to plan. And Tim, you know, as someone who has studied history and, uh, you know, <laughs> seen, seen this, written books about it, what do you think about the fact that what's happening right now with the final group, right? So first there was the screening out, people raised their hands, then another nine people said they had other conflicts, and then you're left with who's left. And 18 to 20 of them are now going through individual questioning in a room with Trump himself and just the lawyers and the judge. And to think about the fact that they're going through the deeper questions to find out bias and other important things face to face with the former president. It is an incredible historical moment, isn't it, Tim? It is, and it's a reminder that uh, presidents, uh, uh, former presidents, ought to be treated like any other citizen. I mean, essentially, uh, uh, President Trump, former President Trump, has made the argument that somehow uh, presidents um, are almost like super citizens, and that there are certain elements of our uh, the rule of law that uh, do not touch presidents. What's happening in the courtroom today is a reminder that no, indeed, um, as George Washington established the principle a long time ago, yes, presidents have power while they're in office, but afterwards, just like before, they return to being ordinary American citizens. And Donald Trump today is being treated, as he should be, constitutionally, as an ordinary American citizen, with ordinary American citizens sitting in judgment. And they are sitting in judgment and that this selection, now we understand about 100 jurors sort of per pool, John, until they get to the final group of, of 12 jurors and six alternates. Given what we're seeing right now, half of 96 gone, then another nine. So you're looking at about a third left to actually consider for the jury. We know 18 to 20 of them were then randomly selected or going through this questioning. We don't know if any will formally be selected for the actual jury today or not 
yet. But from what you do know, how long do you think it takes to actually seat this full jury, John? I would give it at least a minimum of 10 days, maybe two weeks. Uh, it's going pretty quickly, but that's been always what was projected as the likely range. Uh, that's sort of the outer limit, and that would keep them right on schedule. Uh, of course, I would be surprised if Trump uh, and his lawyers don't have some shenanigans to try to protract the process. That would be also uh, standard operating procedure for them. But I think as far as we've gone today, uh, it, it's, it's a good sign. All right. Well, John and Tim, thank you very much. Great to see both of you again. Thank you.